Hi guys, welcome to the channel, Luke here. So um, I've been playing golf for about 12 months now, started in October 2021. I started off my handicap around 30 and it's now down to 13. Um, today I'm just gonna do a short video. I don't pretend to be the best and greatest golfer there, but I've picked up a few tips and tricks and I'm going to today show you some of the key things that have enabled me to come down from a 30 handicap to a 13 handicap. So let's get straight into it. Right guys, so into tip number one. And the first tip I've got is knowing when to use this stick, the driver. Playing with a lot of amateurs over the last 12 months, it still surprises me the amount of people that pick this at the wrong times and it puts them in so much trouble. And so I think it's really important to know when to use this and when it's better to lay up with, say an iron or something you feel comfortable off a tee with. So, again, tip number one, knowing when to use driver. So, we're on hole number three at Rushmore. This is a par four. Flags down there, and we've got a lake. Lake at the bottom. Left is pretty safe, but it'll leave you a difficult shot in. Right is all out of bounds with trees that will basically block you in. And so, yeah, I could hit driver, and I could possibly, maybe two times out of 10, hit one straight down the middle of the fairway, short enough to not go in the pond, leave myself a little chip in. But do I want to leave myself a chip in? Because I personally find that those sort of 50, 60 yard chip shots are just as hard, if not harder, than a full shot in. So here, put the driver away and grab something you're comfortable with hitting. I'm gonna go four iron here. So straight down the middle of the fairway there. And I'm not saying for a second that putting driver in the bag and taking an eye and you're never gonna miss a fairway. But being an average golfer, what you're trying to do is minimize the mistakes that can happen on a golf course. And if you're more than likely like myself to miss hit a driver down the fairway and hit it right out of bounds or you're better off taking an iron. So after that tee shot, I'm in the middle of the fairway. I've missed all the trouble. I've got a full pitching wedge now. Then had I gone right with driver or left over there and had to go over the tree. So something else that really, really helped improve lowering my scores has been chipping and putting. If you're going to practice anything, practice chipping, putting, chipping, putting, score. And I feel especially as an amateur because I miss a lot of greens. You know, I'm not good enough to, to hit 80% of greens in regulation. So I'm relying on shots to put me from being off the green on the green as close to the as close to the pin as possible because the aim really is to be getting up and down you know if you could get up and down but 100% of the time you miss a green you know you're, you're going to be walking away likely if you've done things properly with a par and with chipping I find so many people go with a 58 degree wedge and when they don't need to I mean I personally feel the only time a 58 degree wedge will come out of my bag is if I absolutely have to. If I've got to get up and down over a bunker or I've got very little room to work with, then I would take a 58 degree because I have to. But find a club you like to use, if not two, at maximum and practice with those around the greens, go to a chipping green and get comfortable with one particular wedge because you'll la start to learn what that wedge does. So, now, as you can see, with this particular green, you've got a lot to, you've got loads and loads and loads of green to work with. So I personally would take a 54 degree wedge here because that's just, like I say, what I'm most comfortable with. But 
But if you're struggling with chipping and you're an amateur golfer like me, get your eight degree iron. And what we're gonna be doing is, is playing a little bump and run. With this particular shot, I've got loads of green to work with. So I don't need to try and loft the wedge. We're gonna go with a safe option. It's the eight iron, bump and run, putt in stroke, the toe up, pick your line, visualize the pace. And what you want is a really soft putting grip and let the club fall to come back down onto the ball. You don't want to be short, sharp. And like say, and like so, nice and easy shot. Keep your head down, don't get too looking over here, but head down, toe up. Super simple. And that there is gonna really, really, really help your game. Right guys, so next tip I've got for you is putting. Now, anyone that knows me will know that when I started out golf, I'd probably say that this was by far the worst part of my game. I really struggled to read greens, my pace control was awful and just all around my putting was terrible. And a big part of that was confidence and um, the confidence really came with reading greens. I really struggled to visualize and, and see break so it fa I found that then pace control was just really difficult to gauge and then just generally I was just getting really unconfident. So there was a few things I did. The first thing I did was change my putter. Okay, so I had a bladed putter. Um, it felt great in the hands and uh, it, it looked great, but it didn't help me. Uh, and so I've opted, I've got a um, Scotty uh, Phantom. It's a uh, square face, square, so yeah. it gives me a lot of confidence that when I'm hitting a putt and I've got the line, it's gonna roll end over end, which is one of the key aspects to putting. Now. I, as I said, really struggled to visualize putting and I came across a video actually about how you can feel a lot more of putts in your feet and I always felt when I was putting that I'd be over the ball and my feet were telling me one thing but my eyes were telling me another. And so I started to research a putting technique called aim point and I'm not going to be able to demonstrate the entirety of how Aimpoint works and there are plenty of videos out there that can probably give you a lot more guidance on this than, than I can but it's something that's massively revolutionized how I see putting and my confidence in putting which to the point now I'd probably say putting is one of my strongest aspects. Read. So now, I'm going to just sort of demonstrate a little bit of how Aimpoint works. So Aimpoint really is about feeling any um, degrees of slope with your feet so what you do is you just straddle it and I can tell if the weight is equal further on my left or further on my right and then you rate the degrees by one two three four in so given this a, a read here I can feel that the green is a little left on this side so probably just one degree here it begins to straighten out here. And it's very straight here. So this particular putt is pretty straight. Mm. And just like that. All right, so next tip for you. Now, this would apply if you were hitting a wedge, driver, iron, anything in your bag. I think being a, an average golfer, so many of us think about power. We want to hit this as far as we possibly can. And, I, and, and by doing so, most of us get out of posture. And I, I think you need to be a very skilled, established and mature golfer to be able to full, full swing and stay in your posture 
a lot of people I see, they, they try so hard and they're so erratic and their strike's so poor that they actually hit the ball worse and nowhere near as far as had they with a, a nice smooth swing. Well, where I mean, this is a difficult shot, don't get me wrong, but the last thing I want to be doing is being really rapid and snappy with this. We, I, I, we need a, a nice smooth swing. And so something that I've really took to my game that I, is just trying to swing at 80%. That's what, when I'm, what I think is, if I'm, my full shot's an 80% shot, which actually ends up being a full shot. So try and have more tempo. Think, think 80%. And that nearly went in. So, nice smooth wedge there. You know, it was nice tempo, I didn't try and kill it. And we're back to putting, so. and had that little bit just to right side of the hole but nevertheless a nice easy par final tip of the day and that is get rid of the swing forts and I mean rid of the swing forts new to golf I had so much going in my head wrist down, front weight left, turn, use your hips, I mean all these thoughts and I liken it to driving and imagine if the next time you got in a car if you have a driver's license and you started to think about okay so I need to put the clutch pedal two inches down, I need to find the biting point, when I've got the biting point I need to select first gear, once I've selected first gear I need to pull the clutch out there's too much going on in your brain that even I wouldn't be able to do that now and I've been driving for years. So what I, so what I would recommend is all the things that you're doing at the driving range and all the swing forts leave at the driving range. And if you're going to have a swing fort, minimize it to one or two. So if you're going out on a round of golf, try and leave it to just one or two things, absolutely maximum. And only think about those swing forts when you're doing your practice swing. So on this hole here, and I've just had a lesson that's gonna, a video that's gonna be coming out soon. I'm really trying to feel like I'm trying to hit my shots left. They don't go left, they actually go straight, but I'm trying to feel the feeling is that I'm closing the face down and I'm hitting left. So what I'm gonna be doing here is just focusing in on muscle memory, just getting that feeling. Once that feeling's there, out. And then you just focus, you pick your spot and you visualize the shot, but you have no swing forts. Just visualize the shot, no swing forts, and then from this point onwards, and walk up and hit the ball. As a bit of a bonus, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play one hole with you guys, talk you through what I'm doing in each shot. So this is a par five. We wanna hit a shot about 220 yards. Left is safe, right is trees and out of bounds. So left is what we're looking to do here. I'm gonna take driver. We've got heavy into wind. So I'm gonna to wanna to try and keep this ball low as I can, but I do struggle with that with driver. And a really important part of my game is planning my shots. So I am play here regularly, so I know, but for anyone that doesn't play or play in a new course, open up a course map, have a look at what's coming up next and plan your shots. You know, I know that if I hit a driver here, 
I'm still not going to hit on to get to the green and two, so I, I don't, don't need to swing hard. I just need a nice swing, get me on the fairway. Probably going to take a free wood or five iron, four iron to the next shot to then lay up to get onto the green. So here, I'm just thinking nicely to swing, trying to make sure I close the face down on this shot and try and keep it low. And that there, ladies and gentlemen, is straight down the middle of the fairway. Now, I've got, I want to play a shot about 170 yards here, but it's quite strong into wind. And winter rolls here, so we can pick up a ball, give it a clean. So, given the fact that I'm heavy into wind, I'm never going to reach the green, so I'm just looking to, to lay up nicely. So I kind of want to keep this down. Now I was thinking six iron because that's sort of my distance for the yardage I want, but I think six iron in, in this wind, it, it's just not going to get there. I've got a pond left, so I want to be short of that. And there's a pond further right, which I'm definitely going to be short of that. So I'm going to be taking a four iron here, facing my ball down. And I'm looking to just grip down on it slightly and just play a nice, easy four iron. That is exactly what I was trying to do. So that's two shots there, relatively easy swings. I'm in the middle of the fairway in both and I've played two shots exactly how I wanted to play it because what I'm doing is I'm thinking about my pre-shot routine if you want to call it that and getting the muscle memory and then I'm removing any thoughts from my head and just focusing on where I want that ball to go and keeping that smooth swing as you can see 110 yards from the front of the green now this is where don't get just too focused on yardage so yes it's 110 yards but Rushmore front flags are red so the flag is at the front of the green so that's 110 yards to the front so as a if I have a look at my watch it's about probably 130 yards to the back of the green now I don't want to be short there's a pond short right, another left, which isn't really in play. So, heavy wind into me. So yeah, I could hit a pitching wedge and maybe get it there, flight it to the flag, but possibly be short. So, and if I was gonna try and get a pitching wedge there and long, I'm gonna have to try and welly the crap out of it in this, this wind. So, I'm playing half a set currently, so I haven't got a nine iron is probably what I would take here. However, what I'm gonna go, is I'm gonna go like a nice, again, smooth eight iron. So with this eight, I'm just gonna grip down on it slightly and just nice, smooth swings. And think about what I'm gonna try and do here. So again, flag to the middle, so it's gonna be sort of aiming for the middle of the green. And there we go. I clubbed up, I swung, I swung smooth. I'm on the front right edge of the green. Now I'm there for free. Easy par. So right to left part. too much in it, I think it won. The main thing is just to make sure I
And that there is how you play a hop. Right guys, if you've enjoyed the video, like, press that subscribe button. Um, but for now, that's me out. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you next time.